Welcome to Livestream number 127. My name is Lars Christensen and thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to uh, watch this live streams. Today's topic is how to handle large assemblies within Fusion 360. I know man, about time that I do one of these. Hey, actually we got Isaac here, we got Robert here. Really appreciate all you guys taking time out of your busy day to watch this. Also, if you're watching the recording, of course, thank you. So, let's just take one step back and talk about assemblies um, before I jump in and give you some tips and tricks on how to handle those. Because somebody out there is saying, what is an assembly again? So, what I thought was, here is a drill, okay? This is what we will call a part. It's one piece. Now, if I take that drill and I take like a set like this where we have numerous different sizes drills, we even like this little fancy case here. So this is a bunch of different drills, different components, a plastic case. We can close it together and, you know, that is an assembly. So putting different things together inside of one work environment, that's what we call an assembly. All right, we got that out of the way. Now, the next question we got to talk about is when I say, what is a large assembly? How to handle large assemblies? Um, I don't think there's any rules for what is a large and large assembly. Uh, for me personally, over 100 components, I always think about it like $1 bills, right? Over $100 bills, that's large. Uh, so whatever it is, um, one of the things that happens, there's a couple of things that happens when you're working with uh, last assemblies, and I'm gonna show you that just in a second. One is, well, well, there's two, I guess I should say, there's two scenarios. Either you build the assembly yourself from scratch, I'm gonna show you that, or you get the assembly from somebody else and gotta work with it, I'm gonna show you that. The two things that normally happens is trying to keep things straight um, because the assembly suddenly can get a lot of components and the other things can be performance issues. So that's what I'm gonna try to uh, address today. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything, um, but, and I left a couple of links down in the description area. So first of all, some of you guys uh, remember, maybe have seen the video where I model up this plastic injection mold from scratch. Now, if you didn't do this, if you didn't see this, um, then um, the video link is down in the description area below. Now this to me is probably what I would call a fairly big assembly. Um, you know, there's a lot of different components in here. Um, so so that, could be, that could be one scenario. Um, now the other thing I have in here, some of you guys are gonna be excited about this. Uh, this is uh, the BAC Mono uh, race car. Um, it's a British race car. Now this model here is a lot bigger um, <laughs> than the than than my little than my little uh, mold uh, over here. So I wanted to give you some examples on how you can work with this, and you know, hopefully this is helpful. Now, like I say, I'm not going to be able to cover everything uh, in this uh, in this live stream, and. You know, that's good because then I have more topics to come. Down in the comment area, let me know, you know, if we got to break some of this up into other live streams. I also left the link to free ways that I model inside of Fusion 360. That link is also down in the description area because I think that can kind of like, if you're fairly new, I think that will help you. Okay, let's get into this, um, this cool uh, race car here, this BAC model race car. Now, there might... If you see things are kind of like working a little slow on your screen right now, it's probably because it does that on my um, <laughs> on my computer too. Uh, now this model here um, was actually I didn't model this up. Um, this was brought in from Inventor. Um, actually, I had it in Inventor. I saved it out as a step file, and then I brought that into Fusion just to really make sure I mixed mixed things up. <laughs> um, so this is a typical example where you maybe get a model in from someone, someone else. Either you gotta work with it, or um, you gotta work kind of like around it. And we did a live stream that not very long ago. So what happens when we bring this model in? This is an imported model. 
is that you will actually see that we don't have any history tree down here. This comes in in, uh, in direct edit mode. You will see that I'm actually ending up in the sculpting environment here. But what we have, if I kind of like scrolling down here, and you can see my wheel is spinning on my mouse because this computer right now is really working hard uh, because there's a lot on the screen. Well, I, I guess there's a lot on this. There's all kinds of stuff behind this cover here. Um, so the first thing I want to give you when you get a model like this is I have no idea what everything is, right? I mean, like there's all kinds of different features over here. How am I supposed to, to work with this? My favorite trick is to hover over the mouse, right click, and then in here it says find in browser. And uh, when I click on this, you will actually see that with like blue lines over in the tree over here, it shows me uh, that whole cover right there. So that's one way I can kind of like break it down into, you can see that this is like a bunch of sub assemblies within an assembly. Now this is all within one big file right now. Now I can hide this body. So let me just click on a little light bulb. And then you can see all the stuff that is behind it. So clearly here we are, we are, we are working in an environment uh, where there's a lot of stuff uh, going on. So the first thing I will normally do when I bring a model in like this is that um, I will break it down into kind of different sections. So uh, this MB, MBW, that was clearly the chassis. Um, I can also see here that it looks like I have four wheels and I also have four um, tires. That might be another thing that I'm, I maybe want to kind of like play around with so I can take these here and I can hold down shift and select down here and I could go ahead and, and click on these light bulbs and kind of like hide these components. Now you can kind of like break it, uh, break it down here. And in this case here, this is fairly easy, right? I'm at the top of this, of this tree uh, over here. I can scroll up and down and I can see all these are, are in the top. Um, but it could actually be easier if I could just kind of like reselect all these and, and don't have to click on each of these light bulbs and kind of like trying to find them in the tree. One of the tricks you can do is you can create what is called selection sets. So if I select the body and hold down shift and select all the way down to the tires, I'm selecting all these components. I can right click on here and there's actually an option to create um, what is called selection sets. Okay, so I'm going to create a select, create a selection set that will create a folder up here. Now this folder, if I just expand it, has nine components. That's those nine components. What that means is if I ever click up here and I click over here on select, I will select those uh, nine components. Now I can also turn them back on again just by hitting V uh, for visible in my keyboard. So now you will see that they are all back again. So selection set is a great thing. Now you probably want to rename this. So slow left click and I could call this body and tires, right? Uh, so now if I'm in front of a customer and I'm and, and I'm got to show things instead of I have to hunt through this whole tree down here I can just go over to the selection set bodies and tires select right here hit V and um, And now those things are hidden. So that's a nice nice little trick uh, Now if we move in and we look a little bit closer on this I actually just noticed that there's also these small uh, emblems for the BAC model race car, uh, and they should probably have been in this selection set. Now, again, remember, you can right click on these and say find in browser, and then with a little blue dotted line down here, will show you that emblem. And I can see that there's probably four of them in here. So what I can do, is I can select these four, hold down, select the top one, hold down shift, select the bottom one, that's a Windows command. 
I can go up and I can select, hold down control, select my selection set. That will also select those. So now I have the nine components of the selection set. I have the four components there. And now I can click on the icon next to here that says update. And that will bring those four components in to uh, the bottom, uh, to the body and the tire selection sets. So make sure that you get familiar with uh, these selection sets, especially working with big assemblies. And you can see how my computer is actually thinking here because Fusion is seeing all these components in here, right? Like there's a lot of stuff in here that Fusion constantly has to, to calculate and figuring out. And I'm gonna show you uh, some other tricks uh, about that um, in a little bit. Now, so this kind of like gives you a, a good way to break it down. And I would probably break down, continue breaking down this race car into different sections, right? So maybe you have motor and exhaust, uh, you know, uh, actually the license plates here should probably also have been in the body tire. So we could add those in like I just did. I'll probably break it down into selection sets, but it doesn't really give me a, a good way to kind of like work with this assembly. Again, this assembly is fairly big um, and um, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me to, to have this whole, working in this whole assembly of a car um, if, if I'm just gonna work a little bit on, on a little part, right? Just like if you're working, if you gotta work on your car and you gotta work on your transmission, Many times you will take the transmission out of the car. So you can work on the tr transmission over here and leave the car over there. So that's what I would do also if I was working with this imported model. A way you could do that is if we, for example, look, I mean, this, this model is awesome. I wish I could share it. <laughs> um, my buddy Jay Tedeschi works now for BAC Mono, lucky dude. Um, down here, I actually have, and it's hard to see, but if I zoom in a little bit, I have like the whole pedal assembly in here. So what I could do again was I could right click on somewhere on that pedal assembly and I could say find in browser and you will see that it now gets found over here. Now I probably got to move up to actually find the whole assembly. So I'm just scrolling on my mouse. Like I said, this assembly is huge. So I'm trying to find right now the whole pedal assembly. Oh, there we can see the whole assembly right there. Um, one trick I want to show you, you can right click and you can say isolate. There's isolate. There's a lot of things inside of the right click menu. Uh, so you could actually just isolate it here if you had to do something quick, small kind of adjustment to it. But what I would actually do is I would actually right click and I would save this as a copy outside. So I would actually make a copy of this one in the assembly and I would bring it out in my, in my data panel as a copy. Now while Led is thinking about that, it's gonna right click on the pedal assembly again and unisolate it. So it brings it back into uh, to the whole thing here. Now with this assembly in here, out here, this sub assembly, let me just open that up and double click on that. So here is that assembly now outside the race car. I've kind of like broken the reference uh, for this right now. Of course, if you just made it a couple of small tweaks, then you might just, you maybe just do it uh, inside of the biggest car assembly. But if you really got to work on this, um, I would say the right way, uh, then I would, uh, more in depth, <laughs> I shouldn't say the right way, um, then you probably want to break this car out into sections, just like you would in, in, real, in real life if you were manufacturing this one. Now, one of the things you would notice with this one is I don't have a history tree. So this is what we call direct mode. And it's, it's very important to, to make sure that people understand that why is imported models coming into direct mode? 
It is because it, there's some tools in here that can really help you if you're just gonna make some small adjustments uh, where you can work with it. Another thing you will see is that I can't not drag any components around in here, like left drag, um, because again, there's not a timeline. This is just an imported model, uh, what is great. But if I wanna work well with this one, then I wanna turn on the capture the history tree. And I'm gonna right click up here on the top component and say capture design history tree. And when I do that, we will now get, it's gonna take a second, because you know the more parts you have on the screen, the longer it's gonna take. Uh, now we have the history line down here. Um, now you will see that um, anything we create from here on will be captured down here. What if we had to make some adjustment to this pedal assembly, <laughs> that would make sense. Uh, but you will also see that if I drag parts now, now each are a component that can be moved moved around. Um, here, um, oops, that's not what I to do. Uh, here, there's a couple of tools I just quickly want to show you to make sure that you know. Um, at this point, something like rigid group uh, might work uh, very well for certain things. So what I can do with rigid group, if I click on that, is I can actually sec select components that, multiple components that I just wanna tell the software that these components are where they are and they're not gonna go away. So I just selected some screws. Uh, we could also select, there's a bolt here. Let's select these components that are sitting right here. Um, so these are now a rigid group, these 12 components. I hit okay, it's of course captured. Now what you have now is that these, oh, I forgot a washer, uh, that these components are kind of like, they're not joined together, but they're kind of like said, hey, these are glued together. If I knew that these didn't need to be, be modified, that would, uh, that would make sense to do that. Um, another thing that you need to be aware of if you're working with this is that there is also an option called as built joint. And what as built joint mean is that you can put joints in places where they are actually already where they should be. So if I click here as build joints and I select, uh, for example, our paddle here and I select this bracket, then I get a joint between them and that could be a, a revolute joint, for example, that I now could place. Um, I just gotta select the right axis for it to revolve around. Okay. So now I have, and that of course should also have been, that should have been a rigid group there. This is what happens when I, when I don't prepare. <laughs> So like this base here, where is this base? Right click on the base, find in browser. Okay, that's this one. Let's right click and ground that one for a second. Let's see if I got movement now. Ah, well, my joint is not right. But you get the idea that I can build in uh, the joint between, uh, between these, uh, these components. So I could start creating uh, the different joints that would need it to make this one uh, fully parametric with all the different uh, components. And then probably what I would do in the end when I've done all the work I needed to this one, save it of course, is I would actually probably go out to the one we had in the car assembly here. Um, so let's just, this component here, I would probably delete this one out of here. And then I would go to um, the one we were just working on and I would right click and insert that one into, uh, into this design uh, right here and made that into to play. So start creating kind of like that, um, that, I don't know, intelligence into, into the model. So that's one thing I just wanna kind of like uh, show you. I hope that this kind of, I hope this makes sense. I hope this is useful um, in this sense. So breaking out the assembly, so, Creating selection sets are absolutely awesome, right?
find them in the browser, create the selection sets. But the other thing is start breaking out of the assemblies if it's an imported model, uh, the things that you want uh, that you want to uh, you want to to use uh, out of that. Now another option, another thing is of course um, assemblies that you have that you have done from scratch yourself. So this plastic injection mold is a good um, good example on on something that I did, and the video is down in the in the description area of the video, so you can watch the whole video. I built this time mold a video to do that uh, for this plastic injection mold. But one of the things that happens even when you're creating your own mold, uh, your own part from from start till finish, is of course it. it you end up with a lot of components uh, in here too that you kind of like gotta keep uh, track of. So again, you will see I actually have selection sets in here too for all all the hardware uh, that is in here. That actually makes me want to show you a little trick. Uh, down here on our timeline, you will see that my timeline when I create this, and and I'll be the first one to say that when I create things inside of Fusion. I am not great at keeping my timeline organized. Actually, I should probably say I don't attempt to keep it too uh, organized. I find it kind of like slows me down a little bit. Uh, but here's a neat trick. If we go in and just look at some of all these different actions that happened here. So let me hold down shift. If I select all these areas right here down in the timeline, I can actually right select them again by holding shift. I can right click and I can create groups. So if I right click here and create group, you will see that now those options, and if I hop over it, those things are now inside of a group. And I can expand it by a little plus sign down here. And you'll see that it kind of like cut off down here. Um, I, can, I can right click, uh, Right click on it, I can rename it, so it's default to group 16. We could call this one, you know, um, inserts and sketches. I think that is what most of this is. So you can, uh, inside of, uh, down here in the history here, you can, you can start organizing some of the things in here uh, by right clicking and creating uh, groups. So just like this here, you can see and I mean, of course, make sure you select things that make sense to be grouped. <laughs> but uh, you can see how I can suddenly create multiple groups. And then you can actually also right click on those groups and create a selection set from those. So this gives you a whole other kind of, um, you know, option to, to, uh, to select, uh, select things. So I hope that, you know, two kind of different uh, scenarios uh, in here uh, where you can see, you can kind of like find things, work with things, uh, especially when working with last assemblies. Now, another thing I got to point out is you see that I have linked components in this mold. Now, the, the BAC Mono race car, this was one step file that I brought into Fusion. There was no, so in, in, in Fusion, um, you know, an assembly can live right inside of one file. That's what this is. You just saw that I kind of like started possibly breaking it down if I have to work with it into to smaller sections. Um, but with the mold here, you will actually see I have these different link components. And what I did with the mold, I just go out to the project here you will actually see that all the hardware that was used in here, in that mold, um, I actually created, whoops, I actually created a folder in the project, Paddle Mold Project, new folder, I called that one hardware, and in here is all the hardware that I downloaded, I downloaded this from Haskell's website. So anything you see in here of the hardware is these separate files. This is also a great way to kind of like take down some of the resources that happens when you have a big assembly. Um, if I go back to the car here, and it actually works pretty good if I rotate it around, it doesn't, 
it doesn't chop up. But if you have a very big assembly and you start spinning it around, you might see, uh, you know, that performance really starts taking a hit because again, there's so much on the screen. Well, if you start breaking down into link components, you're actually cutting some of that away because Fusion is not keeping, it's not updating everything in here if I updating anything in here. So if I open up this sprue right here, that's a link component. It's linked into uh, our, our mold here. It's sitting in here. Um, you can see kind of like the back end of it there and another end of it there. Um, but if I start modifying it in here, um, actually, I don't think the sprue is a good example because I just think I broke the link with this one. You gotta watch the video because I put holes in it and stuff like that. Um, well, let's go in and open these bushings up. I don't think I modified these bushings. Um, so if I go into this bushing here, let's just test it. Um, and I, for example, decides to change this bushing. Let's do, of course, dun -dun -dun -dun. let me select these chamfers to, these were some parts that I downloaded from a website. Okay, this whole model is gonna change and be weird, but that's okay. If we make a change to that, I can't select something. So like this and this. Ah, see how it's all getting screwed up. All right, let's make it shorter. All right. <laughs> if I create this and I save it, uh, then you will it will not update in the mold here. I'm not gonna do it because this is actually the mold that you can download. Uh, but when I update it, I will get a little a warning sign up here that I need to refresh the mold uh, and it will update, but it doesn't happen live. So going in and making these kind of changes in link components um, is better for your assembly uh, than if you uh, if you put everything inside inside of, of, of one thing. All right, I'm gonna wrap this up here uh, because I think that I shared uh, a lot of information. Uh, a couple of last things I just wanted to show too with this, with this here. Another thing I want you to be aware of is right now when I hover my mouse over uh, this, car, everything kind of like gets selected. Um, if I go in and I select our selection set from before, select those, um, you have an option in here where you can actually make them unselectable. Selectable, unselectable. If I click on selectable, unselectable, I actually make that whole thing now it's not selected. It's still there, it's still on the screen, but anything, I will not select those covers. Uh, everything in here is now beneath it. Uh, that can kind of like help you too, especially if you're trying, like you're doing joints and stuff like that. Um, I have used that uh, a couple of times. You can actually see over here that it gets a little icon next to it that has like a, a little red dot uh, with a line through it. I can select it again right click and then hit the same option and now they're all gonna be selectable again. So now I can actually select uh, those covers. Another thing that can be nice, if I do it again, select all, right click, is actually play with the opacity control. Uh, so I can bring it down to 50%. Um, so it's still there, uh, but now you can kind of like a little bit easier um, see uh, what's going on beyond it if you if you are working uh, with the assembly. This actually slows down the system a little bit. Now talking about slowing down the system uh, a little bit, um, of course, is that if you are working with big assemblies and you do see, uh, let me turn the opacity back. Um, 
if you are working with big assemblies like this and you start seeing performance issues, there's a couple of things you should be, uh, be aware of. Again, there's a lot on the screen. One is going into your display settings down here. If you go into effect, uh, you will see that I have all these different uh, things on and like anti-aliasing and ambient conclusion, those are huge uh, system hogs. Like they use a lot of, of, of um, power in there. Uh, maybe also ground shadows and ground plane. You can turn these things off. If you're working with a big assembly and you're just trying to make some different things. Now, if you got to present in front of a customer, I understand. But if not, then, uh, you know, turn some of that stuff on. And lastly, you can also go up to the help up here and go into the graphic diagnostics. And in here, there is um, a limit effects to optimize performance. So in here, you can actually go in and, and select this one here and that will optimize uh, the performance. You will actually see my transparency effect here set to better performance. Actually, I think also an option in your preferences in here uh, where you can choose uh, how you want it to, to react to, uh, to those settings. Uh, do I see it? Where is it? All right, so in here, now I can't remember where it is in here. I should have looked that up, graphics. Uh, so in here, graphics, if you click on that, you can choose here for better display or better performance. And if you see issues, you probably wanna have it on, on better uh, performance. This year, to me, is definitely uh, still looking pretty good, even though that it's not, you know, picture, <laughs> picture perfect. That was what I was planning on uh, hitting on today. I hope this was useful if you're working with uh, big assemblies. A couple of things I gotta say before I end the, the, the video here. So tomorrow, Wednesday evening, there's not gonna be any live streams on Facebook. I probably got the best excuse I can come up with. My mom is flying in from Denmark, uh, so I gotta pick up my mom in the airport, sorry. I will be back on Thursday, 8 p.m. here on YouTube. We're gonna talk about Everything I know about tabs, form tabs, and um, fret milling. Uh, we're gonna talk about threats, threats. Um, also, a couple of people uh, made a comment. Last time I made a, a shout out to my friend, John Saunders, NYCNC. You should check out his new website, nycnc.com. I probably know him from YouTube. Somebody was commenting that I was wearing his t-shirt. Today I'm wearing my Jimmy the Rester t-shirt. Another big fan of him. If you don't, if you love videos of people making awesome stuff, go and find Jimmy DeResta's uh, YouTube channel too. That's what all I had. Do me a favor, thumbs up if this is good, thumbs down if it's not, be honest. And in that comment area, anything you have to add to this, I mean, this is just about adding some more value to anybody who's using Fusion 360. So if you have something to add to it, please put it down in the comments area. If you're watching the recording, I'm gonna end the broadcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. If you are sitting in the live stream, 72 people in there, absolutely appreciate it. I'm gonna go into chat and say hi to everybody. So, until Thursday, hope you have an awesome, awesome week. Take care, folks.